this is Dr. Clayton Lane. In this video, I will discuss the discoid meniscus. Let's look first at the normal meniscus. The meniscus is what I term a gasket interposed between the femur and the tibia. You can see the lateral meniscus here and the medial meniscus here. Anatomically, the meniscus is C-shaped. If you look at this anatomical diagram, the medial meniscus looks very much like a C. The lateral meniscus is a little bit more of a closed loop or more of a circle, but still C-shaped. About half of the body weight is transmitted through the meniscus when standing. You can see why if we look at this anatomical diagram and we take a cross section of that and look at it from the side. Now you can see the meniscus, which is represented as these red triangles in the front and the back, really does form a gasket between the curved surface of the femur and the relatively flat surface of the tibia. So that when the load comes through the knee, some of it is distributed through the meniscus and some of it distributed through the cartilage and bone. You can also see what would happen if we didn't have the meniscus. Here you would see the femur without the meniscus we come into contact with this relatively flat surface of the tibia at really only one point and therefore increasing the contact load, increasing the weight on the cartilage, therefore the cartilage wear and arthritis. Now let's look at a discoid meniscus. What happens with a discoid meniscus is during embryonic development, instead of the middle part really going away and, and transforming from a disc into that C-shaped gasket, the meniscus stays intact all the way across the joint. So now instead of a C, you have a disc. So as the weight of the femur comes down, now it's putting all of the weight of the femur on the meniscus. 100% of the weight's going through the meniscus. So as this person walks around, they're walking on their meniscus rather than having the meniscus support them and move out of the way when necessary. Here you see an MRI of what that looks like. Here you have the round femur, the relatively flat tibia, and you can see this black thing here is the meniscus. You can see how it goes all the way across the joint. So the weight of the body is going 100% through the meniscus with every step. You can also see in this case that the meniscus has started to tear because of that. The little white areas here and here. The meniscus is not able to support that load forever and so ultimately it's going to tear and cause pain. So what does the patient look like when they come to the office with a discoid meniscus? They'll usually say their knee's popping, particularly on the outside of the knee. They'll also say they have pain on the outside of the knee. If the meniscus is starting to tear, often they'll complain of giving way. That's where they get pain on the outside of the knee and their quadriceps muscles basically relax and allow their knee to give out as they're trying to do athletics and other activities. On examination, we'll see tenderness along this joint line and what's called a positive McMurray's when I twist the knee in a certain way will get a catch on that outside of the knee that causes pain and that's very specific and occasionally when it's torn in a certain way you'll also see a blocked motion. Some patients make the diagnosis simpler than others as you can see this gentleman can actually make his discoid meniscus pop by twisting the knee. Our case example for this video is a high school offensive lineman who started reporting intermittent pain on the outside of the knee. He was able to tolerate it for a while, but ultimately he had a hard time getting down into his stance because of the high flexion of the knee, which would uh, pinch the meniscus. Also, he started losing explosive power off the line. And unfortunately, this happened right in the middle of the season, and so he debated long and hard about whether or not to have that surgically treated. Here's his MRI. It's the same one we saw before on the sagittal view. You can see the uh, discoid meniscus goes all the way across the knee. If you look at that from the front, again, instead of seeing the C-shaped meniscus, which would have a black triangle here, you have the meniscus going all the way across that compartment of the knee. And again, compare that to a normal meniscus, the black triangle in front and the back of the knee. Here, the black triangle really extends all the way across the knee. And here we are at surgery. There you see the medial meniscus which looks fairly normal. As we look laterally though there's a large piece of tissue obstructing our view. You see as I probe that that's actually the discoid meniscus. And as I continue to probe it further what we'll see in the back corner is a tear. And again 
This is due to the fact that this football player has been running around on the discoid meniscus. 100% of his body weight has been going through that meniscus with every step rather than the normal 50%. So ultimately that tissue can't hold up and it tears as you can see here. So what we're going to do in this procedure is trim the meniscus back to a more normal shaped meniscus. Here you can see me trimming the anterior horn of the meniscus back to a normal width. And then once I'm into the tear on that side, I trim it posteriorly, trimming the posterior horn back down to a more normal appearing meniscus. And in the end, he ends up with a lateral meniscus that looks like it should, a fairly normal appearing meniscus. You can see as I take the knee through a range of motion, there's no more entrapment. And again, there's no excessive force on the lateral meniscus. So again, this patient was actually in the middle of the football season. You can see him there in the center of your screen, number 72. And he is able to get back to fairly full function at four weeks with minimal pain. So in summary, a discoid meniscus is a malformation of the meniscus that often becomes symptomatic in late childhood or adulthood. When tear or pain occurs, the discoid meniscus can be reshaped using arthroscopic techniques, and often the patient will end up with a fairly normal meniscus in the end. Thank you.